everyone, it's Clyde at Vibrant Soap, and today I'm going to be doing a melt and pour soap, but I didn't do a demonstration of the making of the soap, um, which gives me a little bit more time to do a color tutorial. And what you're going to see in this color tutorial is working with reds and greens. Now, a very pure green with a very pure red really signals like a Christmas soap. And that's why I don't often make them um, outside of that season because as soon as you see the, see the red and green, to me, it looks like a holiday soap and I don't want to date the soap. So what I'm going to do in the color tutorial is show you how you can alter the colors a little bit if you really have to use red and green to make them adjusted for just a generic soap or matching the sense of soap or something like that. But what I didn't mention in the color tutorial, which I want to keep um, you to keep in mind is when you're coloring um, melt and pour, melt and pour has that translucent quality or transparent quality and it adds some vibrance to the colors and here I'm trying to replicate that on a white piece of paper which is opaque and not getting this very um, bright color that I want to um, show you. But you will see it in the soap and the reason why again that it's not as bright as I am trying to fight for in this color uh, tutorial is that the light's not going through the color to make it more um, bright. So I'm going to show you the soap and I'll show you in a bit because I want to show it to you with light coming through it. Okay, so you're not going to see me very well. You're going to see me in silhouette because of the backlighting. Um, but I did that for a purpose. And this is the quality I was trying to tell you about. Um, about light coming through a color. There's just no way in the world that you can replicate that very well with um, paints. Um, you've seen pa people paint on glass where the light is coming through it and it looks very intense and bright. Well, that's the look they're looking, they're going for with that glass panel. So I'm going for this type of look in a melt and pour because it has that transparent quality and it's hard to achieve this in the cold process soap because it's opaque. So that has a bearing on how you use color as well. Um, I made some embeds in a flat mold and I cut them in strips and bent them to make the green and then before the white set up I made some um, red and uh, white um, and purple melt and pour and poured that into the top and it basically swirled. A different kind of swirling in cold process and then it is in melt and pour. Okay so we're just going to start our exploration of um, reds and greens and I I don't use like a pure red and a pure green very much um, except for during the holidays and that's um, basically for that reason is that I'm, I don't want my soap to be dated by a particular time of year or holiday um, unless I really specifically um, am going for that. So as soon as you use red, pure red and pure green, um, if that's all you're using, it gives you that um, sort of feeling of um, the holiday soap. Um, show you what I mean by that. If we just take a red, and it doesn't matter if you pair that with white either. It just it just does psychological. It's all over the place. So there's the red and green together. I guess it can be, look like a um, light signal too. But um, even if you don't agree, um, let's just say this is an exploration of color and what um, we can do to make reds and greens work in um, other soap if we still want to use them. So one of the things that we can do is make um, pastel versions and it sort of softens the blow a little bit but there's more we can do with that than just make them pastels like a pink and a light green that would look nice and you can experiment on your own but I know this makes it easier to just kind of see this in a demonstration. The other thing that you can do is to make um, a pastel of one. So we can make a, a pink. But we can keep the other one pretty strong. By the way, um, we can call them pastels, but we're also making a tint of the color. 
tint of the color is uh, the color plus white. So that automatically makes um, the green really stand out as sort of the dark valued color. So that's one more thing that you can do. Um, there's so many things I can do with the reds and greens, but I'm going to just do a few of them today. The other thing we can do is do some muting down of the color. So here's red, and it's so intense, but um, as I've shown in previous videos, just a little dab of green can bring down that intensity. So we can do that with um, the bright green, and that changes it a bit too. And then we can do a tint. of green. Looks like the previous one, but that's just because I didn't make that green very strong over here. So there's just a regular, this couple right here is a shade of red and just a regular green, and this is a shade of red plus the pastel or tint of green. So you can just see what's happening as I add more red or more purple. It's a little darker than I want it to be. A little more white. So this is what's happening if I add more and more white to the mix. I you know, want a little more red. And then go to the green. And the other thing I haven't shown you so far is adding the yellow to the green also. And that's not at all what I'm going for because again I'm doing this so fast that I'm not washing my brushes as much so they're getting muddied down a little bit. But um, So that's another color scheme, something that I did in my melt and pour today, and you'll see what I mean in a moment. And the other thing that adds more depth to some colors, and we're talking about adding these to soap, is to have a combination of both in the same uh, mix of soap. In other words, not mixing them, but having them next to each other. So you get this sort of range of color. Not sort of, but you do get a range of color that way. It's a more of a blending. So you can see how much more interesting this, basically this green is if there's some yellow next to it. And that's what I did in the melt and pour that I'm gonna show you. And I'm gonna try this other thing. Let's start with white. My brush is dirty. I'll be right back. Yeah, it really is deadly to get other colors mixed in, so I guess unintentionally I'm showing you why you want to stay away from opposite colors mixed in too much. They just start to uh, muddy down. Okay, so there's a red with just a little bit of purple. And I'm going to combine these two ideas with the soap that I'm going to do today. So um, there's an exploration of making reds and greens work without them looking too Christmassy. And um, I didn't have a making of this particular soap. That's why I'm able to um, spend more of the time on this video um, with the color. So um, I'll be back to show you the cutting of this soap. And this is already wrapped, but this is the idea of taking the sort of um, pastel version of that reddish purple and combining it with a green that's combined with some yellow to give it more dimension. Okay, I'll be back with the cutting. 
So I don't really have a making up video for this um, melt and pour, but this is gardenia and it's for the festival that I'm going to be selling soaps in. And uh, this has uh, shea butter in it also. I poured most of the base white in it. And then the last thing I poured some um, pinkish, pinkish purple um, melt and pour into the top. Sort of like a drop swirl, but it, it's not as, um, it doesn't show off um, as much in, as in um, cold process soaps. Uh, I like that the green part is transparent. And just realized that last year's gardenia soap sold out, so I may as well make some of this. And I don't like worrying about it accelerating the cold process, so um, it's a perfect opportunity to use it in melt and pour. And I added some extra shea butter to this one. Last cut. There it is.